today we are talking about doubly reinforced beams okay we know what were singly reinforced beams there were beams if this was longitudinal sections the main beams were only like this if this is a simply supported beam the main reinforcement were only in the bottom okay and we, we if we draw a section cross section like this these will be the main reinforcements okay and obviously we will be having shear reinforcements as like this this is two leg reinforcements steer shear reinforcement it will be having stirrup holders like this okay so these will be main reinforcements this will be stirrup holders to hold up this shear reinforcement that's it okay but in case of doubly reinforced beams same simply supported beam there will be bottom main reinforcement and also toe main reinforcement okay these both will be main reinforcement this will be taking tension as this and this will be taking compression okay if you are drawing this as a cross section you will be having a number of tension reinforcement bars main bars main reinforcement bars and at the top you will be having compression reinforcement bars ok so these both bar type of bars will be main bars ok our main concern and there will be obviously stirrups ok so what is the necessity of double reinforced beams there can be three cases case one and that's the simplest one when mu limit is less than mu okay you all know how to calculate the bending moment fractured bending moment mu okay with uh, live load dead load plus live load and then you will multiply to get it as bending moment in case of simply supported beam we will take it as w l square by 8 ok and that you will multiply with 1.5 to get it fractured right that value was mu ok and using that mu value we will be comparing with mu limit right in the case of simply support singly reinforced beams okay we will compare with mu limit mu limit will be can be calculated by from the is code 456 uh, for fe415 it will be 1.0.138 fckbd square and for fe500 it will be 0.133 fckbd square okay so you will be calculating mu limit like that with these equations ok and we will be comparing with mu and mu limit ok simply suppose if suppose mu limit this mu calculated mu was less than mu limit we would take Singly reinforced. If this mu was greater, greater than mu limit, we will take, we will have to adopt doubly reinforced beams. Okay, that is the main criteria. Okay, as you can see. If mu is less than mu limit, we will be taking singly reinforced, and if mu is greater than mu limit, we will be taking double reinforced. And 
major cases it will be because d will be limited that is death will be limited that means we cannot increase uh, beyond a certain point suppose if our death was uh, 600 mm 600 mm this dimension okay and due to architectural reasons you don't want to increase this depth because it will it will be too unaesthetic it will be looking bad and some of the HVAC wires or any other uh, electrical wires installation will be difficult so you want to decrease this value this depth of any B okay so due to some concerns you want to restrain to a particular any value and then there is a chance of becoming MU greater than MU limited okay so this is the first case second case without quite all this calibration we can uh, take W reinforced beams for conservation is when the loads that you are considering is vibrator okay and case one mu is greater than mu limit to vibratory load okay so whenever we have a machine or a particular big equipment that will be installed in a slab that is having a beam and if that particular load is vibratory it's advised that you adopt you design a W reinforced beam okay and third one if load is reversible okay so in any beam we are assuming that load is coming only in this direction okay, we are designing everything in terms of that that's why we are assuming at the at the bottom tension and at the top compression as it will be something like this after bending okay but in some cases in rare cases it can also be acted from bottom load okay so in that case we may have to also consider this chance of having this point as tension okay so in that case also we need to design W reinforced beam these are the three cases okay so I hope that's clear moving on so this is the analysis of singly reinforcing not W reinforced beams we have drawn this earlier this is the cross section and this is strain diagram and this is stress diagram okay and we turn this distance from topmost fiber to centermost point of reinforcement as D effective depth we calculated it for single support design also okay and uh, this distance from neutral axis this is neutral axis from to top distance we named it as XU right and the tension was taken by T by the reinforcement and compression was taken by this whole portion of XUB this is B with XUB of area of concrete okay the there are only minor changes when compared to this for double reinforced beams so you'll be having a set of concrete uh, steel reinforcements for compression okay and we had called this area steel area as AST for all problems and all and in this case we will be taking it as AST will be equal to AST1 plus AST2 okay so we will explain that later we are dividing area of steel taken for tension AST steel for tension the bottom one dividing it as two components AST1 and AST2 okay and this area will be termed as ASC area of steel reinforcement for compression force ASC okay and there will be a cover 
from the mid portion of this main steel to further most of the area further most fiber of beam and we will term it as d dash that is the name is effective cover for compression steel effective cover for compression steel d dash so these are the changes and likewise this there will be another component like this in here that will be taking compression cs compression compressive force taken by steel cs then this will be termed as cs cc compressive force taken by cc compressive force taken by concrete okay so obviously this is analysis of w reinforced beam okay so as we did earlier we will just take all the tension forces and equate it with compressive forces c is equal to t okay so for the time being ast1 plus ast2 okay so c is equal to t t c is or t if suppose t is equal to c t will be always equal to 0.87 fy ast okay that will be always as the same as the single reinforced beams that will be equal to c is actually c is actually cc plus cs cc is the compressive force taken by concrete and cs is taken by compressive force taken by steel okay and i'll just go through it cc will be equal to as always as the old one 0.36 fck xub this area into 0.36 fck 0.36 fck was the force okay plus and cs can be written as asc area of this steel into fsc fsc is a term taken from another table we will get into that fsc minus 0.466 fck this is the main equation for analysis of b okay from this we can calculate x u okay i hope the concept is clear this was c c and this was c s this is t okay this is the equation so we'll right away go to the question this is our question we have given the dimensions already with the depth and like singular reinforced beams effective span imposed load that is udl uh, by the unit itself we can understand it's a udl and m20 and fe 450 okay so from this we will, we are going to design a w reinforced beam okay so the order of calculation is pretty similar or almost identical to single reinforced beams okay in single reinforced beams we will be calculating first dimensions uh, width first then depth then effective depth right then effective span then reinforcement and its conditions minimum maximum conditions etc then we will go on to shear reinforcement then deflection check for deflection right broadly classifying these were the methodology right so in this here also we will be just going through that shear reinforcement will be the same as that of single reinforced and deflection we will just have to calculate kt and kc that's the only difference we are not going to 
uh, getting deeply so these last two steps will be same as uh, single reinforced just you have to calculate kc that's the only different okay and this part will be more concentrating on okay and dimensions are already given 30 and 300 and 700 effective depth you have to calculate effective span is already given in the question sometimes it may not be given you can calculate it though 8 meter okay so first dimensions width is equal to 300 mm and depth is equal to 700 mm okay effective depth same method no change at all we are assuming 20 mm bar for main reinforcement and 8 mm for shear ok so effective depth d is equal to capital D minus C dash right so capital D was 700 minus like you calculate in single reinforced beams the cover can be assumed as 30 clear cover can be assumed as 30 plus shear reinforcement diameter 8 plus 20 by 2 half of main diameter diameter ok so 700 minus 48 right 48 that gives you 652 m as effective depth right so we will write here 652 mm okay so effective span is already calculated then we will get into load calculations okay and that's the main point load calculations How do you get into load calculations? Dead load. We will calculate dead load. We are given live load as 35. Dead load can be calculated as 25 kN per meter into 0.3 into 0.7. 0.3 meters into 0.7 meters. Okay, you will get 5.25 kN per meter. That is dead load live load or embossed load was 35 kN per meter so total load will be equal to 35 plus 5.25 that is 40.25 kN per meter bending moment as it is a Simply supported beam, right? That is the question. Simply supported beam. The equation was W L square by eight. W was forty point two five into L is eight meters. Effective span eight square divided by eight. Okay. So that will give you three twenty two kilo newton meter. Okay. And as always. Factored bending moment mu right mu will be equal to 1.5 as in any load in case of limit state method 1.5 into 322 that will be giving 483 kilo meter that will be the considering mu value okay So you have mu, then next step is obviously you calculate mu limit for FV415 mu limit equation is 0 
एफ सी के बी डी स्क्वायर एफ सी के इज ट्वेंटी बी इज हाउ मच थ्री हंड्रेड एंड डी इज बी डी स्क्वायर डी डी स्क्वायर डी इज सेवन हंड्रेड ओके सो यू विल गेट थ्री फिफ्टी वन पॉइंट नाइन एट किलो न्यूटन मीटर एस एम यू लिमिट so then now compare these two values mu and mu limit values you can already see that mu exceeds mu limit unlike in case of single reinforced beams okay so that's why therefore doubly reinforced beam is adopted okay so in your question there not be necessarily a term called double reinforced beam after comparing these two values we will get into inference that we are designing singly reinforced or double reinforced okay if mu is less than mu limit we will decide decide singly reinforced if not we will decide double reinforced okay so moving on then the main part calculation of reinforcement okay and for this you can refer the page number 96 of is 456 you can get all the equations related to calculation of reinforcement in w reinforcement okay so for calculation of reinforcement we earlier said that ast will be divided to ast1 plus ast2 right okay and you got uh, mu value as 483 around kilo newton meter and mu limit value as 351.9 kilo newton meter right so we have excess of mu to take care of okay so ast1 you have divide ast to uh, ast1 and ast2 please be attentive ast1 will be taken care of till mu limit value okay for this much value we will adopt or we will decide AST one, and for the balance, so the reinforcements are actually bending moment are actually tension force, and usually this bending moment up to this limit, mu limit value, will be deciding, especially as AST one. Okay, and there is some balance, right? The actual bending moment is four eighty three. Okay. So, what is the excess bending moment? That is four eighty three minus three fifty one point nine. Okay. So let's say that value is one thirty two kilo newton meter. For that bending moment, we will decide AST two excess bending moment. Okay, I hope it's clear. We are divide AST. It uh, this as AST one and AST two. We'll decide AST as area of steel reinforcement one as for the mu limit. We have an easier equation for that. That's why that is the convenience. We have an easier equation for mu limit corresponding to mu limit. We'll decide AST one and the excess value. The difference between this, the what is the excess? bending moment than mu limit suppose can change ast2 will be taken caring of this much value okay whatever the values difference of these two values okay ast2 that is the logic okay so now get on with the designing part AST one can be calculated from the equation 
xu by d is equal to 0.87 fy ast1 in singular reinforced it was just ast okay in this case we are assuming it as ast1 and 0.36 fck bd okay so from this equation we will calculate ast1 by substituting fy as 415 fck as 20 we know b and d and xu limit xu by d will be substituted as xu limit by d you know the xu limit by d from page number 70 as in we have we had referred it for designing of mu limit value okay so we will substitute xu limit by d value in rhs lhs and then calculate ast1 so ast1 will be equal to xu limit by d into 0.36 fck bd by 0.87 fy okay so substituting these values 0.48 is the xu limit value for fe415 and 0.36 into fck is 20 b is 300 d is 652 divided by 0.87 fy is 415 okay so you will get the value as 1872.3 m square okay so in singular reinforce we are having a quadrilateral equation it was a uh, much complex one than this okay as we are assuming xu lim xu by d ratio as xu limit it's much easier and because we are getting it for mu limit okay that's why we are adopting like this ast1 and ast2 okay so we'll get this equation as such from the code you substitute these values jet of just obtain ast1 okay so you have ast1 I'll just write in here okay so now we will move on to AST2 so before calculating AST2 you need to calculate ASC ASC is area of steel for compression this portion area of steel for compression ASC is equal to mu minus mu limit divided by FSC D minus D dash you know what is mu and mu limit FSC we will discuss now you know what is D that is 652 D dash we have designed it we have designed it as 48 this distance d dash it can be calculated in here right for the calculation of ft dash that can be same adopted as d dash okay so we know d dash as 48 mm right so mu and mu limit you know fsc fsc is stress of reinforcement in compression okay and you can calculate the, this value this logic is what how much stress will be taken at the compression by the steel okay and it can be calculated easily by if it is fv 250 it is just fsc is just 0.87 fy that's it but if in case of fe 415 and fe 500 you'll have to calculate by 
interpolation or you have a couple of values the values will be in terms of d dash by d okay so d dash by d values can be varied from 0 0.05 0 0.1 0 0.15 0 0.2 okay so these are the values of d dash by d you know what is d dash and you know what is d okay for all these values you have stipulated standard values such as so this is a table for calculation of fsc okay so with respect to fp 415 and 500 you need to calculate d dash by d and take the corresponding value from this table okay if any value that falls between these values had to be value from this value can be should be taken interpolated okay so i hope it's clear so uh, for your information it won't be included in your is code so you need to know this a couple of values you don't need to go to this extent uh, suppose six values you need to know around values just a uh, switch of variations can be tolerated okay so right now what is d dash and d so d dash by d is equal to 48 by 652 that is 0 0.073 that comes in between so we don't right now for the time being we are concentrating on 450 okay so we'll just get rid of this and the value will be lying this value will be lying between these four values okay so we will get rid of this now you need to interpolate a value corresponding to 0 0.073 from these four values okay it's too simple Point zero five, point zero seven three, point one. Okay, for point zero five, the value was three fifty five, point one, point one. The value for was three fifty one point nine. Okay, so you need to calculate this value, and that value will be FS. Okay, so no, no need to get confused. Okay. So now you need to calculate FSC and suppose that value interpolated is 354.08. Suppose there can be a little variations. So 354.08, you substitute all other values into this. You know MU as 483, MU limit as 351, D is 6852 d dash is 48 fsc is this much so asc you will get 612.6 mm square okay so asc is equal to 612.6 millimeter square okay so you have asc now you will calculate AST2. AST2 will be equal to ASC into FSC divided by 0.87 FY. Okay, so you know the values of ASC 612.6, FSC you know as 354.1, and you know what is FY. Okay, so you just calculate, substitute those values and get AST2 as 600.7 millimeter square. Okay, so you have AST2, AST1, AST. So what will be AST? AST will be equal to AST1 plus AST2, that is 1872.3 plus 600.7. That will give you. 2473.07 mm square. Okay, so 
AST in here total AST will be equal to 2473 the top part will be 612 mm square okay I hope it's clear okay so move, move on to next one so AST we will correct it as or it was AST1 we will do AST as 2473.07 okay so now we will calculate the minimum maxim and maximum of AST and ASC okay we know the minimum and maximum of ASC AST right so in the page number 46 we will check minimum and maximum reinforcement okay so for AST minimum reinforcement is minimum is 8 minimum is equal to 0.85 fy by bd okay so substitute these values and maximum value ast maximum was 0.04 that was 4 percentage of b into d total cross section okay that was maximum so you need to make sure that this value is between these two limits minimum and maximum okay and in case of ASC ASC minimum is 0.2 percentage okay that is 0 0.2 by 100 into BD total cross section 0.2 percentage should uh, ASC should be at least 0.2 percentage that is minimum and point to be noted it is not in the code you need to learn by yourself just a value 0 0.2 percentage right okay minimum value ASC maximum is the same 0 0.04 B 4 percentage ok so also you need to make sure that this value falls between these two values ok so these are the conditions out of this just this one is not in code the remaining three values will be directly equations will be directly given from the code itself ok so that's minimum and maximum reinforcement limits and now we are going to calculate as always number of bars ok so for AST we have assumed for both we have assumed we had assumed 20 mm bars right so AST value was AST is equal to 2473.07 mm square so assuming 20 mm bars calculate the number of bars you know how to calculate it's just number of bars is equal to 2473.07 by pi by 4 10 d square okay so you will get around 8 bars okay this 8 bars will be very difficult to contain in this portion okay so do not take any value greater than 6 so what you have to do you have to increase the diameter assuming 25 mm dia bars same equation you will get about 6 bars you are okay with it okay same thing for ASC 
AC was equal to 612.6 mm square. Same method you calculate for 20 mm bars. You will get number of bars as two numbers. Okay, so that's okay. You will just provide two. So six will be providing in two rows. Right. Okay. And that was the number of bar spot. And with that we have done with we have done with main reinforcement and then shear reinforcement. Shear reinforcement is same as which one? Single reinforcement means you need to calculate tau V, then you will compare with tau C and you will compare again with tau C mass. Okay. So the same method you will decide typically for two left eight mm bars, that's okay. Okay, so you will just do as it was in single reinforcement. Then last one, check for deflection okay so with that check for deflection we are done with the design of double reinforced part we, and you need to draw a longitudinal and cross-sectional diagram neater diagram okay that's it so please do try more questions so i have just gone through in a faster pace because we have gone through single reinforcement in detail okay so please go on, go through this question again and please carry on more questions okay Thanks.